Hello, my name is Kun Dyer. I'm very honored to speak to you today as an SQM agronomist. SQM is a global company with vast experience in specialty plant nutrition management for over 50 years. Let's now focus on the nutrient requirements and fertilizer selection. Of course, potatoes are no different to other plants requiring all essential macro and micronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, sulfur, magnesium, iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdene. All these nutrients have essential physiological functions as described in these tables, but some of them are required in higher amounts than others. Due to high production potential and the accumulation of starch in the tubers, potato crops require large amounts of nutrients, especially potassium. If you look to the levels of nutrient removal and nutrient accumulation of potatoes, as shown in this table, it becomes immediately clear how important the requirements of potassium and nitrogen are. This makes it even more relevant to supply potassium in combination with nitrate nitrogen to optimize the uptake of both nutrients together, especially during the tuber filling stage. The uptake demand peaks clearly during tuber filling when potassium is required in high amounts to transport the photoassimilates from the leaves through the phloem to the filling tubers. Now we would like to exemplify how to evaluate the main differences between the nutrient sources. As we saw previously, nitrogen and potassium are the nutrients required in the highest amount by potato, so Let's use these nutrient sources to highlight the main differences between nitrogen and potassium sources. Let's start with potassium, since it is the nutrient required in the highest amount by potato. Potassium is the nutrient required in high amounts because it is involved in many physiological processes. Osmotic processes defining root uptake regulation of the opening and closing of the stomata, so transpiration, water movement in general, and transport and storage of photoassimilates and starch during tuber filling, as mentioned before. So, a plant with higher efficiency in these processes will result in increased dry matter and yield levels, greater size of tubers, increased resistance to frost and drought, better quality in transport and increased shelf life, better cooking and process quality, and improvement in coloration after frying, for example. If we look to the main potassium sources used in agriculture, shown here as potassium nitrate, potassium sulfate and potassium thiosulfate, and potassium chloride, it is not the potassium itself that makes the difference, since the element potassium is present in the same chemical form in all these sources. But the difference and impact on soil nutrient solution and in the plant will be defined by the counter ion, which is different from these different sources. When potassium nitrate is used as the potassium source, nitrate nitrogen is supplied. When SOP or PTS is applied, sulfate is applied. And with MOP, chloride is applied. Now, chloride, when absorbed in excess by the plant, will lead to toxicity. Common visual symptoms of chloride toxicity are necrosis of leaf margins and dips typically observed in old leaves first. Chloride can also cause leaf damage when deposited on leaves by overhead irrigation or side dress application. Excessive leaf burn might eventually result in leaf drop and loss of photosynthesis capacity. But even at less visual levels of chloride toxicity, there will be a decrease in photosynthesis efficiency, resulting in lower photoassimilation 
for photo assimilate production. Chloride that will not be taken up by the roots increase soil salinity, which will affect root development, water and nutrients uptake. No wonder in general potassium chloride results in a strong decrease in dry matter content and an increase on loss of weight during storage, unlike potassium sources without chloride, with equal amounts of potassium applied. This graph shows the weight losses during storage of 9% in the case of use of potassium chloride and being only 5% in the case of use of potassium nitrate. You see that this is economically very significant, especially for warehouse potatoes. These management considerations to select the right potassium source might indeed help you to increase your economical result. When we use SOP or PTS instead of MOP as the main potassium source. We should also take into account the amount of sulfur supplied together with the potassium. As potato requires high levels of potassium, if we supply all this potassium as SOP, we will also bring higher quantities of sulfur than needed. We should be aware of that in order to keep the balance between the elements and not generate sulfur excess in the soil nutrient solution. A calculation example based on the levels of potassium and sulfur that are exported by a potato harvest show that we bring in an excess with up to 6 to 11 times more sulfur than required by the plant. Some excessive uptake will take place, but the majority of the sulfur will stay in the soil solution, increasing the EC and salinity diminishing indirectly the uptake of water and nutrients required. On top of this, especially under rather dry conditions, the sulfate might bind with calcium as gypsum, making the calcium fixated and less available. Calcium is already an element which shows reduced uptake under dry conditions, while it is taken up basically via mass flow only. If you make it even more difficult for the calcium to be taken up while creating an environment of excess of sulfate, you will have negative effects on the strength of your plant in general and the strength of the tubers in particular. The downside on the uptake of potassium by the use of SOP should also be seen in another way. As you know, the potassium uptake is really peaking during tuber bulking, so also the availability of potassium should peak then. We will now show you a video comparing the difference between granular SOP and granular potassium nitrate, clearly indicating that the difference between the solubility of these two sources indicate that the peak demand of potassium can only be supported well when the nutrients become easily available. The high solubility and speed of the solution of the potassium nitrate source is matching the demand. The speed of the solution of the SOP is not. Let's discuss the impact on the salinity. Although the direct increase on the EC seems rather low in the comparison between a 1 gram per liter solution with SOP at 1.54 and the solution with potassium nitrate at 1.35, however, you should also consider that the nitrate, if applied properly, will be completely taken up by the plant and the sulfate, if applied in excess, only partly will be taken up according to the plant requirements. So, the difference in residual EC will impact much more on the salinity status of your soil solution and you should care on the longer term for your soils, while these excesses might accumulate over time. Besides an effect of excessive sulfate, the use of SOP or PTS as unique potassium source has another indirect impact on the nitrogen sources that you apply. The following graph reflects the optimum nitrogen source balance needed for potato in practice. This scientific study conducted in South Africa clearly shows that independent of the dose of nitrogen applied, 
we see the same picture where a combination of 80% nitrate, 20% ammonium exceeds clearly the yield levels of 60% nitrate and 40% ammonium and 60% nitrate and 40% urea. The impact of the nitrogen sources is also reflecting on the quality. As an example, you see here the impact on the dry matter content related to different nitrogen sources. Also, take into account an improved uptake of calcium in synergy with nitrate from potassium nitrate and calcium nitrate, which will lead to a stronger peel, lower vulnerability to bruising and decreasing storage losses if we replace potassium nitrate by SOP as unique potassium source, you would see that we create an imbalance. Not only will we exceed the sulfur demand, contributing to unnecessary levels of salinity, we would also not add nitrate and make it more difficult or even impossible to achieve the right nitrate ammonium levels. Nitrate might still be supplied via calcium nitrate or ammonium nitrate but will not reach to the levels required. And if the extra nitrogen required is supplied as urea or ammonium sulfate, it will strongly change the balance in favor of ammonium, with impact on the pH. Acidification in the root zone can then be expected due to the excess of ammonium. And also, antagonistic uptake of cations like calcium, magnesium and potassium will negatively impact yield and quality. Some of the potassium can be delivered by SOP to supply the sulfur crop requirement, since SOP is a good source of potassium and sulfur, as long as it does not lead to excess of sulfur. If you take the majority of the potassium required from potassium nitrate, you are able to supply also some of the highly required nitrate content for an efficient cation uptake from soil nutrient solution. In fact, the main advantages of the nitrate nitrogen in comparison with ammonium nitrogen can be summarized as follows. No losses by volatilization, good mobility in the soil, reaching the roots easily, being efficiently absorbed directly by the plant, also promoting the absorption of cations due to the synergistic effect, no need to be transformed by nitrifying bacteria so less dependent on pH, moisture, oxygen, texture, temperature. It is converting in amino acids in the leaves which is more energy efficient than the conversion from ammonium in the roots does not generate pH acidity, it helps to prevent chloride uptake and salinity stress. It is a precursor of cytokinins generating a higher number of stems and tubers. So the right sources matter, as we described in this example of potassium and nitrogen sources. In practice, the benefits of the use of potassium nitrate based nutrition specific for potato production can be summarized as follows. It supports a faster start, while increased uptake of nitrogen and cations lead to a faster root and canopy development. This is especially important in colder conditions when bacterial nitrification rates are low. A better canopy formation, also because nitrate stimulates lateral plant growth, a better root development and a higher number of tubers better tuber filling through more efficient potassium, nitrogen, calcium, magnesium uptake during peak demand, better storage and processing quality, also thanks to a better potassium and calcium uptake, a better external quality of the tubers and a better internal quality of the tubers, less reducing sugars. And when it comes to efficiency, we usually see less nitrogen losses lower residual nitrate by the end of the season, due to efficient uptake of the nitrate nitrogen source when applied properly. And we see reduced salinity buildup due to minimum contribution for chloride and sulfate excess 
with higher water use efficiency as a result. Now, good nutrition management is not only about the right sources we just discussed, but also about the right rate, the right time, the right place of application, as this is described in the 4R concept developed by the International Plant Nutrition Institute. The right rate should take into account the overall requirements of the different nutrients according to the expected yield, taking into account the reserves from the soil and the water. But the rates also should correspond to the requirements per growth phase. Therefore, there is value in splitting applications. It allows you to correspond better to the requirement at some specific moment in the growth season like to the peak demand of potassium during tuber filling when potassium is required at much higher amounts than nitrogen. In fertigation systems we are usually quite flexible in applying a growth state specific balance. But under irrigation or rain fed systems the best we can do is to split our applications. In practice, split applications increase efficiency. A study in Belgium with 23 trials between 2006 and 2013 showed reduction of nitrogen losses between 6 and 11 kg per hectare. Another experiment in Chile showed 9% yield increase only by splitting potassium supply between application at planting and at 45 days after planting. So, the right time is important as well and split applications are advised. The importance of the right place is illustrated by the effect of in application of granular fertilizer compared to spreaded application, reducing up to another 30 kg per hectare of nitrogen losses as shown in this study from 2019. I would like to finish by showing the impact of proper nutrition management, applying the right sources at the right time, just briefly, without explaining all details about the circumstances. For more info, you are most welcome to contact one of our local offices or local agronomists. Here you see trial results from Belgium, where we applied potassium nitrate-based balanced fertilizers in split application. The programs with more balanced nitrogen to potassium and nitrate to ammonium ratios by the use of potassium nitrate based granular mixes compared to programs based on potassium chloride showed indeed faster start expressed in higher crop heights resulting in higher yield. In a field experiment with improved balances per phenological stage in Poland in 2020. A faster start was also observed and a higher number of tubers could be assessed. A yield increase was noted by more than 12% and because of the better storage qualities related to improved potassium and calcium uptake, the net yield difference after three months of storage was even 17%. Because of the good tuber filling, the yield increase in the better economical classes above 50 mm was leading to an increase of net income of more than 30%. Note that these results were achieved by replacing only a portion of the potassium from potassium chloride and two potassium from potassium nitrate. So we can also advise to shift gradually to better sources with better timing of application of potassium and nitrogen. These practical results show us that the insights we gathered and shared in this session and which led us to a better design of balanced fertilizers and a smarter application of them lead indeed to good results in the potato fields. And remember that under conditions like cold, drought, salinity and other stresses the nutrient source selection will be even more critical. And these conditions are often encountered during a growing season in many parts of the world. We hope that these SQM Academy insights will help you to decide to opt 
for more balanced nutrition as key management parameter to increase yield and quality in potato. It will help us all to increase efficiency of our natural resources, land, water and nutrients. Thank you for your attention.